All right, what's going on? This is Pete. Uh, we're over here at SWRNC, and what we're doing is we got a 1964 Volkswagen Carmen Ghia, and we got to remove the body off of this car. Now, uh, these procedures, the steps that I'm going to take to remove this body, is basically the same on all vintage Volkswagen products, such as Carmen Ghias, Beetles, buses, this, that, or the other. This is how you do it. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. All right, if we look at the car, what we're looking at here, we're looking at the 64 Carmen Ghia that has been basically sandblasted. I don't recommend sandblasting the body, uh, but the owner took it upon himself and did this. And uh, he calls it, they call it glass bead built blasting, glass bead blasting. But if you really think about it, glass is made out of sand. So there you go. Uh, I recommend to do... Uh, soda blasting on the outside of the body due to the fact that it won't remove the factory uh, electroplate uh, finish that is applied at the factory. And if we look at this car right here, you'll see the difference in uh, texture that you have. This has been hand stripped. Okay, we hand stripped this with uh, paint remover, paint stripper. And if you, have a be uh, if you have a soda blasted, it'll do the same thing. If you look at the finish on this, you can see that I could touch that and uh, this, that, and the other, and it'll never rust out because it still has the factory uh, dipping, factory electroplated coating, the rust protection that all manufacturers put on their vehicles and all the steel that goes through. So look at that finish right there. That's been stripped by hand. You can also have that soda blasted to that finish. And then we look at the sandblasted finish, and you can see that that's very rough and very coarse. And... Uh, unprotected. So we got to really, really be careful taking this off because all it takes is a split water straw. If you look right here, you can see that's where water dripped on it last night from rain. Okay, there's a little water spot. And of course it leaks from the ceiling, but that's the situation we have. And also right in here. Okay, so it's very, very important that uh, you get that in epoxy primer as soon as possible once you have it sandblasted to this measure. So what we got to do is we got to remove the body of our car, okay? And I'm going to take you through the steps of what it takes to remove it. It's a very simple, easy procedure and very, very easy. Okay, what we're looking at here, we're looking in the trunk area. This is where your gas tank would go. And it's the first thing you want to do to remove the body, of course, is you want to go ahead and remove your master cylinder. The master cylinder has already been removed out of the vehicle. The master cylinder sits right here in this area. I don't even know if you can see that. There you go. Okay, and of course it hooks up to this hose right here. Uh, we went ahead and had that removed. Uh, the owner removed it before he took it to the sandblasters. And uh, what we're going to do now is we've got to remove the steering column from the steering box due to the fact that the steering column is mounted on the body. Okay. And the easiest way to do that, of course, and I'm also going to let you know I'm wearing rubber gloves due to the fact I don't want to touch this metal and get the moisture from my hands on it. We're going to hit, go ahead and disconnect the ground wire for the horn. Okay, that's the first thing we want to do. And then, if you look right here in this area, you're going to see a, a bolt. Okay, if you look right here. Before you can remove that, there's a little plate that's uh, bolted underneath it. And what that is, that's a stopper plate so the bolt won't back off. You got to go ahead and get yourself a punch and a hammer, okay, and you got to bend that back. So let's get that done. And sometimes it's a pain in the ass, especially on these older cars, to get this off of here. You got the wrong fucking punch!
Okay, once your pulp stopper has been flattened out, okay, you can see it right here. All right, once that's done, you want to go ahead and get your wrench, and we're going to go ahead and remove this bolt. That's a 13, not a 14. Okay, if you try to do it without taking that off, you're going to find out that it might be a 14 until you realize that you fucked up. And the real situation is, is that uh, it's got that stopper plate on it, okay? And a lot of people don't know about that. A lot of people don't know that that stopper plate's even there, especially if it's the first time that they've ever done this. And that's the situation you have. But we're going to do it, and we're going to do it right, okay? Because I'm right here with you. My friend Pete is doing this to show you that you can do this at home. As you see, it is now removed from the steering box. While I'm in the trunk area, what I'm going to do, we already have the steering, uh, loose, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove the two front bolts that are bolted to the top of our front suspension I-beam, okay, and uh, those are going to be 17 millimeter. Now I'm going to use an impact, uh, you at home might use, uh, you might be using hand tools, but I'm going to go ahead and use an impact to get these off. These are, these are our front mounting bolts and plates. Let me show you that. You don't want to lose these, okay. Do not lose those. Those are very important to keep, all right, just like they are. And as we're removing the bolts and the plates and all the parts, if there's more than one piece to it or it's a special nut and bolt, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and put some tape around that. That way we'll know that that goes to that piece, okay, and everything that goes together with it. The next set of bolts that we're going to remove are going to be located under the back seat area. We got a 17 millimeter in each corner right here. Let me get that off. And as you see, sometimes they're a fucking bear to get off. So we're going to go ahead and take our half inch impact on this one. Go ahead and remove that bolt. We're going to go ahead and run our impact across all the mounting bolts under the seat with a 13 millimeter. And there'll be a total of four of those. Make sure that you get the washers, okay? If they're no good, throw them away, but you want to keep the washers. These are basically called fender washers. They're very big and fat, but they're also a wave washer, okay? And a wave washer is basically a German type lock washer. So don't lose those. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.